The screen is visible. Yes, sir. Don't, don't we have discussed in the previous class? Okay. The previous class we have discussed earth test race. Yes, sir. Okay. So in the today class, we are going to discuss about the single phase electrodynamometer we are going to discuss. Okay. This one. Okay. So, single phase electrodynamometer power factor here, the power factor meter. We are going to call that one here. So, we have we have used the PMMC, EMMI that is moving iron instrument, EMMC that is electrodynamometer that we have used for the measurement of voltage, current, power. We have used different equipments. Now. While considering the AC system here now, the parameters, the power is the product of voltage, current, and power factor. Yes, P equal to VI cos pi, we are going to use for the AC. Yes? P equal to VI cos pi, yes. we are going to use. So V, we can measure, we have discussed the equipment by using, the, to measure the V, which equipment we have to use. To measure the power which equipments we have to use just a minute So we know that P equal to VI cos pi, okay? P equal to VI cos pi, we know the power formula of power here. For the AC circuits, we are going to use this one. Yes, so in this formula, from this one, by using to measure the P, we are going to use a watt meter. To measure the voltage, we are going to use the volt meter. To measure the current, we are going to use the emitters here by using if we are having these all instruments we can measure the cos phi by calculating it is possible here no cos phi equal to what p divided by vi yes we can by using this formula also we can calculate but some instruments are there which from that instruments we can measure the power factor directly over there we can measure the power factor we can measure here so we know the formula of cos phi. Cos is nothing but what? It is, sorry, phi is nothing but what? It is a phase angle we are going to consider here. Phase angle that is called cos, that is angle between voltage and current. So angle between voltage and current we are going to call as phase angle here. So the, our main aim of this equipment main aim of this equipment is to measure the power factor is to measure the power factor so to measure the power factor what we are using here we are using a single phase electrodynamometer we are going to use here the single phase means it has one phase one neutral two points are there here one phase and one neutral here so the dynamometer already you know that the dynamometer has half of the coil is connected here and in between we have kept the moving coil half of the fixed coil it is there here we can call like this so one fixed coil one moving coil is there that one fixed coil is split into two parts we have to call that one here so like that we are using here this one is fixed coil we are using here 
we are using a fixed coil here now. One is fixed coil. And we are using two moving coils here now, which is connected to the spindle here. Actually, one moving coil only we have to use, but here two coils we are using. In that two coils, moving coils are pressure coils. One is connected to the inductive load, another one is connected to the resistive load here. See, I will show you papers. This one here, coil A is there here. This is the coil A, which is so from the phase, the supply will come here and it will take the current will start to flow here. And through a coil A, the resistive load is connected to the coil A here. So the resistive load is connected to the coil A here. Now. And from the again phase here, now the coil B is resist connected to the inductive load through inductive load. It is given to the written path here. That will go to the neutral. This will also go to the neutral. So the alignment of coil A and coil B, the moving system is here. Now this one, the x-axis we have taken as a reference plane here. The reference plane we have taken here now. So the A coil, whatever we have mounted here now, that is fifth, uh, the angle theta, we are going to the angle of deflection of that one is theta, we have placed at the theta here now. And the angle between A and B is 90 degrees that here. You can see that the difference between the angle between A and B, this is the coil A reference here now, and this is the coil B reference here now. So it is 90 degree only, it is like this. Yes, the reference line, this one, and this one, it is 90 degree difference is there here. Yes? Yes, sir. So, so the angle of deflection is actually the theta is angle of deflection we are going to call. According to the, from the reference point, the coil A is theta degree apart from the reference plane here now. Theta degree apart from the reference plane and from coil A, the coil B is apart from 90 degree over there. So from reference plane to theta, reference plane to B plane, B coil, it is theta plus 90, we can call that one here. Theta plus 90, we can call that one here now. So like that, this alignment we have connected here now, and the load is connected here now for the fixed coil we have connected here now, see here, the load is connected here. The load is given again, it is sent to the negative here. So our aim, main aim of measuring the, what we have to measure? The power factor we have to measure here now. See here, previously here, both the coils, they are going to produce the deflection force here. The deflecting force will be produced by force both the coils here. But if the both are opposing, then there is no moment to use that here. The force is opposing to each other, then there is no moment at all. If they are equal, then what will happen? The deflecting force will be produced here. Now the spindle will coil start to rotate here. Now base the spindle is connected to the pointer here. Now that is also it is going to connect and it is going to show the value here. Now it is going to show the value we are going to call here. Now. See here, mainly I have considered this is resistive load and inductive load is there. The coil A is connected to the resistance, coil B is connected to the inductance here. Now. So I will take the, it is nothing but it is RL load, okay? Resistive inductive load, it is nothing but, yes? Yes, sir. So I will ask one simple question. I don't know how many of you will uh, under answer this one here. Suppose here the R resistive load, the V, lags the current or leads the current or is in phase with current here. The voltage or current only you consider that one here. Current I for the resistive load I am asking current I leads the voltage, lags the voltage or is in phase with voltage. In phase. Yes. In phase. Your voice is not clear, madam. Anybody? Roll over five, Sonal. 
Rule number eight, Sonal Lohar. Rule number eight. Rule number nine. We have studied in this one uh, in the diploma, it may be, or in the first year also, you may have studied. This is a basic question. So, Shreya has measures of that one, both are in phase here now. So, in phase, we are going to call that one. For the resistive load, the voltage and current both are in phase. Both are in phase here. Suppose for the inductive load, for the fewer inductive load, I leads the voltage, lags the voltage, or in phase. That one you tell me. Yes. The resistive load, it is in phase okay voltage and current both are in phase we have discussed for what about for the inductive load anyone anyone can you tell me sonali for the inductive load the current leads the voltage or lacks the voltage are in phase which one is the correct answer I'm asking to you people only. Is it audible? Hello? Is it audible? Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Okay. The screen is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So I asked one question about that one. If for the inductive load is there, then voltage lags the current or current leads the voltage, current lags the voltage are in phase here now. For the resistive load, we understood that when the current is in phase with voltage. Okay, in phase with voltage. For the inductive load, it may current may lags or leads here now. That is the answer I am expecting from you people. For the inductive load, current leads the voltage or lags the voltage. Which one is correct answer? Lags. Current Lag the voltage. lags the voltage. By angle of? Current act lags the voltage Five. by angle of? Phi. Phi? 90 degree actually we are going to call that one. For the fewer inductive load, the current lags voltage by 90 degree. For fewer capacity load, current leads the voltage by 90 degree we are going to call. For the fewer inductive, only L is there. If combination of L and R is there, we cannot say that is 90 degree. It may be any angle that is called. We are going to call that one as phi here now. So here, what is this one? Current. What is V means? This voltage here now. So angle between voltage and current is nothing but phase angle. So for that reason only, for the resistive and inductive load, we are going to consider the voltage and current. We are going to consider that is as. So <clears throat> the supply voltage V will consider, we'll take here, a reference I will draw here as a V here now. I will draw that one as V here now. So in this one, the current, total current, it lags the voltage by 90 degree. We are going to not 90 degree, it is because combination of resistance and inductance. First, what you will do before this is total current I here. Now. This is total current I is there here now. I is equal to IA plus IB here. The current flowing through the coil A is called IA that is connected to the resistance load R here. So this IA is in phase with voltage here now. So there is a small uh, uh, error is there. Actually, it is not there. This is IA we are going to call that is called which is in phase with voltage V here now. 
IA is in phase with voltage V here. So IV is connected to what? IV is connected to the inductive load or resistive load? This coil V is connected to the inductive load here. Now the coil V is connected to the inductive load. So if the inductive load is there, then the angle between voltage and this inductive current is this current IV lags this voltage by 90 degree here. Now for that reason, we have taken that is called IV here. Now that angle between IV and VA that is 90 degree we have considered here now. That is 90 degree here. Now. So this current, total current I is the summation of IA and IB here. Now. The I is the summation of IA plus IB here now. So it is the combination of resistive and inductive load here now. So this total current I lags the supply voltage by an angle of phi here now for that reason the total current we have taken in between this one here now. So that is called the angle we are going to consider as phi here now. The phi is nothing but the angle between, phase angle between voltage and current here now. Here V is there, here I is there here now. So that is called phi we are going to call. This is the just construction and how to draw the phasal diagram I have explained here now. If you have any doubts, I will draw the circuit diagram also. I will try and explain that one. See here, in this place, I will draw. First, I will take the voltage as reference plane here now. I will take just a minute. I will uh, take the dark line here. I will take the voltage as a reference line. That is called V I will take here now. So this is called voltage here now. Supply voltage I will take in a reference here now. So the current will start to flow here. Here at this point, the current will flow through the A here now, current A. So IA it is current flowing through the resistance is IA. So for the resistance load, it is both are in phase here now. So the current IA is in phase with that voltage here now. That is called IA I will write here. That is called IA here now. Next, same current it will flow through the other current coil V that is connected to the inductive load. So next what we have to do for the inductive load, this IV lags the voltage by 90 degree here now. So this is the point reference point here now. Lags means it should have to, by considering the anti-clockwise direction, it should have to, lags means, oh, it is lagging here now, it's a bit downside now. Leads means it is upside here now. So lags means the 90 degree we have to draw one straight line that is called, we have to give IB here now. That is called IB we have to give here now. So this two angle between this one is 90 degree now. Yes? Yes, sir. It's 90 degree here now. So the current flowing through the moving coil A and current flowing through the moving coil B, we have drawn the phasal diagram. Next, the total current that is called I, it is flowing with inductive load and resistance load here now. So what we will do for the RL circuit, the current lags the voltage by an angle of phi. So what I will do, I will draw here now at the middle of that one. This one I will give as I here now. Total I I will give here now. So the angle between this voltage and current that is called phi. That is called phi we are going to use here now. Now is it clear how to draw the phasal diagram? Is it clear? So one by one yeah. we have drawn here now. So this is the construction I told construction of this single phase dynamometer type of ectometer and its phasal diagram construction here now. How to construct the phasal diagram and all the things here. Now, same thing I have written here. Construction of the single phase electrodynamometer power factor. The construction of a single phase electrodynamometer type power factor consists of a fixed coil here. Now it consists of fixed coil which acts as a current coil here now here. This is the current coil, fixed coil is there. It is a current coil. And these two are the moving coils. Those are the potential coils here, pressure coils. So you have to call that one here. That fixed coil is there. This fixed coil split it into two parts. One is half of here, another half is connected to here on this here. It is connected to coil, this coil here. Now this one, one half, first half. This is second half like that. We have two halves we are using here now. This fixed coil is, split up into two parts and carries the current of the circuit under test here now. That current it is going to take and it is, we are, which one? Yeah. We are going to 
test them. Therefore, the magnetic field produced by this coil is proportional to the main current here. Power. Whatever the magnetic field will produce us in between two half coil, that is proportional to the current here now because of the current only it is magnetic field will be produces here now for that reason how much current will pass that much current magnetic field will be produces here now. two identical pressure coils a and b pivoted on the spindle here now. so we are using two moving coils we are using two moving coils here now so both are identical both are in same number of turns it has here now identical means same we are going to call here now two identical moving coils we are using here now that is one is coil a one another one is coil b told here now two identical pressure coils a and b pivoted on a spindle constitute the moving system here now it is going to reflect the moving system here now because the spindle is already in the pmmc a moving iron and emmc you have studied that one the inside that one spindle is there that spindle is connected to the moving coil if the moving coil is rotated means spindle will connect that spindle is also connected to the pointer over there the spindle rotates means the pointer will also rotate that part already you have studied that one here now so in these two identical coils out of these two coils the one fresher coil is connected to the non inductive resistance means the coil a is connected to the resistance coil a is connected to the resistance and coil b is connected to the inductive load coil b is connected to the inductive load two coils one coil is connected to the inductive load another coil is connected to the resistive load here now so that one only they are describing here now pressure coil a has non inductive resistance connected in series with it and coil b has a highly inductive choke coil l connected in series with it here now both inductive and resistances are connected in series only here now. so the resistance is connected in series with coil a and the inductance is connected in series with coil b here now okay so two coils are connected across voltage of the circuit both the coils are connected to the voltage supply here now the values of r and l are so adjusted that two coils carry the same value of current at normal frequency the values we have adjusted that the current should carry by both the coil should be same for the normal frequency we are going to tell that one r equal to xl if resistance is equal to in the reactance xl equal to omega l l is nothing but reactance that of that inductive coil here so on that condition so both the current should be same we have to assume that okay the current through coil a is in phase with circuit voltage because why this current through coil a is in phase with the voltage current through coil a is in phase with voltage why anybody so many times i told just now the current through coil a is in phase with the circuit voltage why why it is in phase resistive load because of it is connected to the resistive load here now the coil is connected in series with resistive load here now so for that reason coil a current through coil a is in phase with circuit voltage while that the coil b lacks voltage by an angle of delta is nothing but 90 degree which is nearly equal to 90 degree 90 degree only we are going to consider that one which is 
nearly equal to the 90 degree or 90 degree we can call that one because that is inductive load it has because of that is inductive load is there. so the angle between the planes of coil is also made equal to delta here now whatever the theta is there or phi is there that should be made equal to the delta so iv we have to match that one here now so there is no controlling device here now because both are is in opposing forces will be producers so mutual inductance because of that one so there is no controlling device here now so connections to the moving coils are made by thin silver or gold ligaments here now whatever the moving coil systems are there we are going to use thin silver or gold ligaments which are extremely flexible thus give a minimum control effect on the moving system here now so the material what which one we have to use that one they have told here now. so this is the construction of that equipment here now so the working how it is going to operate and how it is going to work we have to do now here now. in order to simplify the problem we assume that just we are assuming that the current through coil b lags voltage by exactly 90 degree whatever i have told current flowing through the coil b that is called inductive load is there so it is current lag current flowing through the coil b that is lags the voltage by 90 degree we are assuming here now so delta equal to 90 degree so also that the angle between planes of coil is exactly 90 degree from coil A to coil B, it is 90 degree here. Now, there will be two deflecting torque, one acting on coil B and other one acting on the coil B here. Now, Therefore, the coil windings are so arranged that torques due to the two coils are opposite in direction. Both are in opposite in direction. Therefore, the pointer will take up a position where these two torques are equal. Direction opposed, but both the torques are equal. Then what will happen? The pointer will take up the position over there here now. So, based on that, what we have considered here now, see here, here two coils are there here now, A and B here now. Whatever the angle is there here, the angle between voltage and current, we have assumed that is phi here. But this current flowing through the coil B, that is inductive load, lags the voltage 90 degree we are considering same 90 degree we are assuming here that when the coil a and coil b both are divided by 90 degree here now. see here now. from coil a to coil b that is 90 degree difference is that now. this one we are going to assume because of this this coil also it has it will produce some force this coil also it is going to produce some force here now so if the coil a current is that is nothing but if it is leading it will come it will go into more rotating this one it is going to lagging in this rotation you are going to consider both the coils it will produces the force in opposite direction only whenever the coil a force is greater than coil b then the pointer will move whenever the coil b force is greater than coil c the coil will rotate here now so actually in the power system we have to maintain unity power factor here now if it is lagging or leading because of these two forces it is going to occur Based on that, we have to derive so one equation that is called whatever the this deflection is the theta, whatever this angle of deflection is the, the pointer deflection equal to phi. We have to prove that one here. So the phi is the angle between voltage and current. The theta is the deflection here. Now, if we have proved this one means the scale is uniform, whatever the angle of deflection is there here now, it is going to show the power factor or phase angle. We can call that one over there. So to prove that we have to do some equations we have to write those equations i will tell you now here let us consider a case of lagging power factor of cos phi to write this equation actually what we have to do we have to take the diagram here now just a minute i will take the diagram also here then it will become easy <laughs> Otherwise, I have to shift the diagram from one place to another place. You go, Jaira.
Is it visible? Diagram is visible? Yes, sir. The phase angle is also required. Phase diagram is also required because it will also give some values over there. See here. Both the diagrams I have taken here now. We have to consider a case. I will put here. On the we have to consider a case of lagging power factor. We are going to consider that is called lagging power factor. Cos phi is lagging. We are going to consider this one here now. This one only it is lagging now here. The pointer is also it is connected to the lag. Yes. Yes, sir. Lagging we have considered here now. So two talks will be producers. One is because of if coil A and coil B here. Another one here. The torque producer, deflecting torque produced by coil A, we have to derive the formula. Next, deflecting torque, coil B, we have to derive the formula. If both are equal, then we are going to tell that one theta, we are going to identify how much deflection we have occurred here. So the deflecting torque acting on coil A is equal to, that is called TA, I am going to consider here now, TA. And the K, we I will consider as constant here now, K. And it is the actually the voltage of this one and current total current vi vi i have used here now m max is the maximum mutual inductance between coil and coil b here now so mutual inductance maximum mutual inductance we are going to call that one maximum value of mutual inductance between the coil and coil b and v is the supply voltage i is the total current here now and the main important is here now. See here, we have considered cos phi and sin theta here now. So TA, where is the TA? He is this. The current is in phase with voltage here. Now. The current is in phase with voltage here now. So what is the angle between this IA and I here now? IA and I, what is the current difference between IA and I? Phi only, na? Phi. So phi. we can consider that is called cos phi. B ka chalo. So that is called cos phi. We are going to call that one here. Now this one that is the current IA and I, I. The difference is phi is there. So cos phi we have considered here now, and from that is related to the phase diagram. So related to the coil A we have considered here. And from this one, the, the this is for the angle we have written here now. And what is the deflection we have to consider here now? So what is the deflection from the reference plane to the coil A? Reference plane to the coil A, what is the difference here? Theta. Theta, that is called sine theta here now. So TA, K constant, V is voltage, I is current, mutual inductance value of, maximum mutual inductance value of, so A and B, and this is the current angle here now that is called phase angle of cosine cos phi, and this is deflection angle that is called sine phi. We are going to call that one. Here. So the reactive component we are going to call that one as sine theta, and for the active component we are going to call it here as cos phi. We are going to consider here now. So this is the total torque, the deflecting torque produced by the coil A here now. At the we are considering that it is at lagging position here now. At this cos phi is that is lagging here now. So the reference plane we have taken from the reference plane, the coil A is theta degree that is called theta degree deflection is there. So theta sine theta we have used from the phasal diagram. We have angle between this IA and I that is called phi is there. The cos phi we have used, other things we have as it is here. Similarly, similarly, anyone can you tell me for the deflecting torque acting on coil B? Deflecting torque acting on coil B. Anyone? Same thing. Pb equal to Kvi as it is we are getting here now. M max we are going to write here. Tb is related to which current? The coil B is related to which current? Ia or Ib? Ib. Ib here now. 
so what is the angle between ib and i here now what is the angle between ib and i just think that one 90 minus theta Yes. What is the angle between I B and I? Don't know. See here, T B equal to K V I M X. We have written as it is. We have written here. Here, cos phi is there, but the A deflecting torque related to A A to I, that is I A to I, the angle was phi. But I am asking the question: What is the angle between this one here? What is the angle here? Ninety. Ninety. How it is ninety, madam? From here to here, it is ninety degree. Yes. From V to I is phi. From V to I B that is called ninety here. No. So total ninety may. How much minus? Karne ka hamko. This one. If we minus it, this five. one here means that is called. This is the angle, na? In this ninety, total is ninety is there. In that ninety, we want only this part here. Now, this part we have to minus that one here. Now, ninety minus five we can use. Yes, sir. So that is called cos ninety minus five. We have written here now. Cos ninety minus five here. Now. Next, sine theta is there. Theta is related to the deflection here. Now, so for the a coil, it was deflected theta degree, but now from this is the reference frame from the reference plane to the cos the coil b what is the angle you have to tell here now from here to here what is the angle here now 90 plus theta because from here to here theta from this coil a to coil b that is called 90 so total is theta plus 90 degree that is called sin theta plus 90 degree we have to write here So cos ninety minus five we can write as sine five. Yes. Cos ninety minus five we can write sine five. Yes or no? The mathematics we have studied. I think M one M two you have not studied. Please okay. That is standard formula is there. Cos five by uh, cos uh, five by two minus five is sine five, and cos five by two plus five is called a uh, cos five. We have. Standard formula here. Now, so this ninety minus five, it is going to give this cos is converted into sine five. So K V I max as it is, we have written here now. That is cos ninety minus five is sine five, and cos ninety plus theta is cos theta here. Now this sine is converted into cos, and cos is converted into sine here. Now we have calculated both the torque equation. We have calculated T A and T B here. Now we know that one. The coils will take up a such a position that Two torques are equal here. Now both will the coil will takes up when both the coils are equal here. Now for that reason, what I will do, I will write T A equal to T B. I will write here now T A equal to T B here now. The K V I K V I gets cancelled here now. So we will get M max M max will get cancelled here now. So we can tell that one cos A sin B and sin A cos B equal to A or B. We can write here now on that condition. The formula is there. Cos A sine B equal to sine A cos B. This one we'll consider as one is A, another one is B here now. Here A and B we can call that one. So the in the mathematics there is a formula. Cos A sine B equal to sine A sine B. That one we can write as A equal to B. We can write that one here now. So based on that we can prove that one theta is directly proportional to the phi here. Theta is directly proportional to phi here now. Whatever the angle between this voltage and current is there, this theta is angle between voltage and current only. Yes, phi phi angle phi is the angle between voltage and current, and theta is the deflection we are going to call here now the deflection. So we have proved that one theta is directly proportional to the phi here now. So angle of deflection is proportional to the power factor. We can. Tell that one here. Now, cosine of angle we can 
set here now 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 here now by adding the first value here now so based on that you can say that one the scale is uniform here the deflection is theta the output is phi here now if theta equal to one then this is also one like that the scale is uniform there is no phi by two there is no phi square and all the things here so from this circuit we have proved that one the angle of deflection is equal to the power factor we have proved that one here so this is the working principle of single phase electrodynamometer power factor meter we are going to call that one here now therefore the deflection of the instrument is measure of phase angle of the circuit here now whatever the deflection is there is equal to the phi theta is nothing but deflection phi is nothing but is phase angle of the circuit here now for that reason the scale of the instrument can be calibrated directly in terms of power factor we can calibrate the scale by in the form of in terms of power factor we can calibrate here now because we are getting a phase angle here now directly so the instrument must be designed for and calibrated at the frequency of the supply on which it is to be used whatever the supply frequency is there same supply frequency we can use for the calibration also here now in case the meter is used for any other frequency or if the supply contains harmonics harmonics in some errors we are going to call that one odd harmonics even harmonics but even harmonics are not that much harmful but odd harmonics are harmful over there whenever you will go for the third year finally we are going to study of that subject over there yes so the oscillations we can call that one it contains supply voltage and it contains any harmonics then it will give rise to serious errors over there because of harmonics only we'll get some errors we are going to get in the indication on the account of change in the value of reactance of the choke if the harmonics are present error will produce because of that error what will happen the inductance value will be changes over there so we are not going to get the output exactly we are going to call that one here so this one is the construction and how to draw the phasor diagram and we have to prove that one theta was equal to phi is nothing but deflection equal to phase angle here now so derivation so construction working construction of phasor diagram and the derivation we have discussed here now if you have any doubts you can ask this one any doubts hello yes sir the sin theta j the reactive hmm. power will not be like ka hai sin theta ah, yes sir deflecting torque of coil ट्राइंगल अकॉर्डिंग टू कॉल दैट वन दिस वन इज कॉस थीटा yes yes sir so same thing we have taken we have considered this one only we have to consider na the deflection here now so that reason we have considered here now from this one you consider here now this one we are considering the x axis here now this one what is this one cos phi only na the voltage across voltage it is the angle phi is the angle whatever we are discussing here now power factor is angle between voltage and current is there here we have taken the reference as voltage here now here the reference plane we have considered as x axis here now so y axis we have to write here now. so for that reason we have written in this one the deflection actually reference plane why considering that one will write whatever the angle deflection is there in the form of sin only will write that one. so voltage triangle impedance triangle have you studied i think i heard that one voltage triangle in the inductance impedance triangle based on triangle method only we are writing this formula this is reactive component only na so this one only we have considering here amit okay sir okay next any other doubts oh assignment 2 minute class any doubts
Yes or no? If you have the doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll go for the next topic. No, sir. Okay. So, okay, no means. So, already time is also up. Then also I will tell that one. This one, whatever we have discussed, that is for the single phase. Here, one phase, one neutral, we have used here now. This single phase electrodynamometer for the power factor meter we have used. And we have discussed the construction of the diagram, construction of phasor diagram, working principle, and the equation, whatever the torque equations. And we have proved that one angle of deflection is equal to the that phase angle between voltage and current. So similar case, we are going to consider for the three phase case now. That is, instead of one phase, one neutral, one phase and neutral, we are going to use three phases, one phase to another phase. That one we will discuss in the next class. We will discuss this part here. Okay. So just I will take the attendance and we will stop here only. Just wait a minute. Number one, two, three, four. Roll number four, are you there? Yes, sir. Your number is not unique. See here now. In the continuous order should should have to come. Six, seven is there. Eight, nine, ten. Roll number add one. Seventeen. Roll number seventeen. Nineteen. Twenty-seven, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-seven. Hello. Okay. So we'll stop here only and we'll continue in the next class. We'll continue that one.